Hello and welcome to, to this week's Market Focus on 17th of October 2011. Uh, my name is Gerard Poller and I will be going through uh, the week's past event and forthcoming uh, week activities. Um, it's certainly been a, an interesting week that we've just gone by. Uh, markets uh, have really um, bucked the trend for October here and it's, uh, it's really defying its reputation. As, as a month of one of the cruelest months for stocks and global bourses. Um, obviously, we've seen all indices rally, and traders are really betting uh, that the Eurozone debt crisis can be contained, and obviously the U.S. economy will uh, avoid recession. Um, just going back to some of last week's activities, uh, the S&P 500 had its strongest weekly performance since July 2009, and is now up 11 0.4% in the last past nine sessions. So uh, the, one of the leaders of the U.S. Uh, indices really uh, surging ahead and showing the right or way really for the for the rest to follow. And uh, in Europe, we've certainly seen the like as well. Um, we now are very much in earnings season and it's in full swing. And bulls will certainly hope that Monday's offering from Citigroup uh, and IBM are better received as that of those of uh, Alcoa and uh, JP Morgan, which really disappointed last week. Um, Europe's reporting uh, period begins in earnest also this week with uh, Philips uh, getting the ball rolling. And pessimists will note that the market is at risk of being disappointed should Eurozone leaders not deliver an adequate uh, proposal for halting uh, sovereign debt contention. Uh, perhaps this is the reason why this uh, powerful recent rally is uh, to a one-month high, and the euro is given back nearly, like, nearly 0.1% on Monday to trade around about the 138.79 level. Um, but counteracting uh, the bullish technical signs that we're all really seeing, um, the VIX indicator, which obviously measures uh, uh, expected equity volatility and which is seen as a gorge for investor anxiety, on Friday closed below uh, the 30 level for the first time in more than 10 weeks. So these are these are quite key signs, really, that there may be a, a shift in momentum here in market uh, market consensus. And meanwhile, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, the S&P's close at 1225 took it above uh, its resistance at 1220 and towards the top of the range it has in inhabited since the start of August. And the next hurdle to the upside may be the 100-day moving average at about uh, 1237, although momentum indicators such as the 14-day and the RSI suggest, you know, there is certainly overbought uh, territory now, uh, and, you know, maybe we, we could be uh, due for a pullback before we surge ahead. But looking ahead this week, ladies and gentlemen, um, Although last week was fairly light on the data front, uh, this week uh, there's no exception. We're, we've got a fairly full week, and uh, inflation figures are due from both the UK and US. The UK consumer prices released on Tuesday are forecast to reach 4.9% uh, for September, up from August 4.5% and close to where the Bank of England expects to peak. So that's certainly some figures you really need to keep uh, keep an eye out. And obviously more from the Bank of England, especially uh, the reasoning behind its uh, 75 billion quantitative easing extension. And this will be published on Wednesday. But I'll just drag that down for you guys here. Um, so the MPC meeting minutes, and that will prompt to at uh, half nine. And, you know, we'll see the reasoning why they wanted to really uh, uh, put in that extra $75 billion and we'll see how the market reacts to that. Uh, U.S. consumer prices, meanwhile, are seen uh, holding flat at a 3.8% on the year. And on Monday, uh, the Empire State Manufacturing Survey in, in New York Federal Reserve Region is expected to show an improvement um, from uh, September's disappointing report on the same day industrial production also is seen edging higher so that's out at half one so another certainly uh, uh, emphatic piece of data just to keep your, your tabs on there 
Um, sentiment also in Germany now, surveys in Germany have been really sliding sharply in recent months, but probably some of the most recent improvement economic confidence seen in markets last week should help us uh, slow the decline. And the October Zoo Index, obviously, which is a, a key indicator in Europe and in Germany of expect economic expectations, are, are published on Tuesday. And... Um, is expected to really hold steady at really minus 43.3 uh, level from hit last month, while Friday's uh, IFO index, which is a business confidence uh, survey, is seen marginally lower at 106.6 to 107 in September. So although um, it's pretty light in terms of uh, US and UK data, we do have an IFO and uh, other, other details later on in the week. So tomorrow certainly is more of a heavy duty day in terms of uh, economic data. So, you know, always uh, keep, uh, keep a watch for that. And um, just really, I'll move on to some of the, the, the key earnings that we're expecting this week. If I just uh, see if I can uh, move this over for you guys to have a, a quick look at. So obviously today, uh, Citigroup uh, uh, will be uh, reporting IBM um, of the other big ones today, obviously from Europe, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Philips Electronics. And tomorrow is interesting. We have uh, uh, Apple will show its uh, first quarterly earnings without uh, uh, Steve Jobs, uh, unfortunately, um, who really uh, passed by the last week or so. So it will be interesting to see how Apple's earnings, especially the release of the, the new iPhone and uh, Goldman Sachs, uh, also, and uh, Bank of America and uh, Morgan Stanley will be uh, keeping us uh, on our heads as well, so Tuesday as well, so uh, again, Tuesday's a big day it seems, certainly, not just on the fundamental data side of things, but earnings, so keep uh, keep your toes about you on Tuesday, certainly, so we've got quite a bit of uh, financial data and uh, financial earnings as well, and later on in the week, we've got from the UK, we have uh, B Sky B which will be reporting its uh, final uh, quarter three earnings, see how they come out. And, um, and to finish the day, uh, the week off, really, we, uh, we're looking towards, if I just scroll down here, some of the big ones maybe, uh, nothing much on Thursday, AT&T maybe, uh, Cairn Energy, I know a lot of guys like to look at that, but finishing off really uh, on Friday with the big one of uh, General Electric, which will be uh, an interesting one to see how we finish off with the week. So that's really the fundamental and uh, economic outlook at the minutes, how, how are things um, out there globally and um, hopefully we can join me next week to see how some of these pan out so uh, thank you for listening to this week's Market Focus bye bye <laughs>